we are live. It is not 8 o'clock like I said yesterday it would be. But it's 8.30. We actually were in here so at 8 o'clock. We were. But um, I realized <clears throat> at the very last minute that I had forgotten to schedule today's live last night when we got home from uh, Steamers West. So from board game night. Uh, so yeah, I went ahead and just scheduled it, gave us another half hour to uh, just kind of chill. Can you have pass me my Aquafina? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So that's that. We are here. It is the morning. It is 8.30. Good morning. Catherine got back to us, planning on getting pictures taken sometime this year. Could we send it to you then? Yes. Yes. The sooner the better. Yes. Don't they have a selfie of each other even? Sooner the better. They don't need to be formal pictures. They don't. I just want a picture of them. Need to be formal pictures. I just want a picture Isn't of you Isn't this two riveting together. content? They don't need I don't to be formal pictures. Right we just want to. Because I want to. Because if I know. we got so much to do today, I'll forget. I gotta get it done now. We don't have so much to do today. There is steadily things to All do. Oh, pish posh. All it's right, not that coffee big of a up. Day. David Brownlee Let's is go. here. Let's go, David. I'm good glad you made it back. Good to meet you, David. I started. Hey, I know David Brownlee. I started. <laughs> I started cleaning it, but I didn't finish. Well, we got distracted. He <clears throat> but that's cool. I know him. Nuno Rebello is here. Hola, everyone. Good morning, Nuno. The whoop oh, is sick is here. Good afternoon. Good morning. Tom is here. Hello, hello. Vanessa is here. Good morning, everyone. Currently on my way home. I had to work this morning. And? Play games. No, it says had to work this morning and? Play games. That's what Vanessa I, that's does. That's not what she did. <laughs> she had to work. <laughs> David is reassembling his table at home. <laughs> yep. Uh, David David is from um, Bellevue. Bellevue. I was going to say Bothell, but I knew it wasn't right. It was one of the B's from over there. He's from Bellevue, and he actually drove three hours last night to come over to um, uh, uh, Steamers West, our board game night, and then he drove back home last Thank night. Thank you. That was amazing. So that was cool. He also brought his game topper. Mm -hmm. um, he had a Watson cool. size. Yeah, he had a Watson. And uh, that was cool. So we had two game toppers at game night so last nice. night. So that was cool. Representing Berkey. It was so cool. So that's cool. It was so cool. Yeah, it was very good. Also had to run a couple errands. Needed coffee and birdseed. Coffee. Well, hopefully not together. I'm begging you for birdseed. I don't think that's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's from a comedian oh. called Peter Kay. He's British. Is he the one? Oh, he said he misheard things. Yeah, and yeah. and I don't think he actually did. No, I guess he gotcha. just thinks that sounds like they're saying this, so he puts it in his yeah. his skit. But that's one of the ones. I'm begging you for bird seed. <laughs> I heard I heard the cars. Who's going to drive you home tonight? Um, in Steamers West the other day, and it made me think of Peter Kay because <laughs> he said they played that. During a concert to help the starving Ethiopians. It's a it's about pork pie. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he plays it. And there's this part in it. Uh, and there's this time in the background where I don't even know what it says. Mm -hmm. But it definitely sounds like it says, pork pie. <laughs> <laughs> and it just, it's just so funny. I love stuff like that. Comedians are hilarious. I love them. Uh, let's see. Doug is here. Good morning. Great to meet David last night, he yes, says. Yes, that was super cool. Nuno Rebello, I'm getting ready to play Sheriff of Nottingham with the kids. Oh. That's a good one. That's a very fun one. I like that one. That's the bluffing one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fun. Or you try to sneak mm -hmm. different things in through past the sheriff and he snaps you or he doesn't. <laughs> Played with Michael. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. That was fun. All right, down in some water. Now I can have my coffee. You don't have your coffee cup in here. <clears throat> oh. Out of nowhere. Ta da! It was hidden. I couldn't see it. Kong Kong. <laughs> 
16 Easy Al B. Hey Sam, I'm trying to decide which game to buy between Raiders of the North Sea and Champions of Midgard. Which would you recommend? Hands down, I don't even have to think about it. Champions of Midgard. Raiders of the North Sea is a good game. Don't get me wrong. But Champions of Midgard is much better if you buy Champions of Midgard with the expansions. Close the door. Oh, okay. If you buy Champions of Midgard with the expansions, uh, it's an even better game. So Valhalla and the Dark Mountains, you need to buy those two expansions if possible. I know Nuno was saying that it was a little hard for him to find the expansions, but um, if you can do that, if you can find the expansions, uh, well, even if you can't find the expansions, Champions of Midgard is a, great, is, is a better game than Raiders, I think, in my opinion. You ask for my opinion, so that's that. I'm, I can't say that it, that's an objective truth, but in my opinion, I like Champions much better. Um, but with the expansions, I, I would I would stand my ground on the objective sense that it's a better game than Raiders. But that's completely up to you. Uh, teaching your kids to lie and sneak <laughs> things. Might regret that when they are teenagers. No, uh, they already know how to do all that. Mm -hmm. <sighs> we're not teaching them. We're just teaching them that they're going to get caught. Oh. You know, you're just honing their skills. <laughs> <clears throat> honing their skills, that is it. Well, we had a, an actually a super awesome board game night last night at Steamers West. So, <clears throat> if you're watching, thank you everybody for coming out. And if they are not watching, they're probably you enjoying been a there. good was morning's wish. rest. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we played, I, I, it was another, I was in another, not really a gateway situation because there were, <clears throat> uh, the first game that I taught was Imperial Miners, and I found out <coughs> that is not the best game in a gateway experience. It just isn't. Now, the guys that were at the table had played games before, but I think they were, uh, I, I, I don't believe that they were hobbyists. Although I was talking to one of them, Phil, and he was talking about how he was trying to start his own board game night and it just kept not really going anywhere. And then he saw that we were posting um, through Together Wenatchee. And so on that Facebook post page, and so he decided to, he actually said he actually had one uh, scheduled for last night. Hmm. And everybody canceled on him. Hmm. So he said, fine, I'm going to come to this one. Nice. So that was cool. Um, so I don't, I don't know that it was an actual gateway experience, but I, I could definitely tell that for... Mm, not all, but I think most of the people at the table, we played a f one, two, three, four, five. We played a five player game of Imperial Miners, and I could tell that it was a next step experience. I will say, we have to have a new rule. <laughs> you can't leave. I tried not to. Because then things got real hairy. I tried not to. I asked. I asked nicely. And a certain individual I told I me no. I taken care of that because that did, it's, <clears throat> I did not love that. And then you had to leave again. I, I d either you're there or you're not there. When you leave, especially in the middle of a game with a new bunch of people that are gateway gamers and I'm trying to teach I'm them and then trying. I have to jump in and then it stressed me out and I got into a whole debate with somebody, literally, about one card. He goes, I don't understand what activate a minor means. And I'm like, it means you choose one and you get to do the effects of that card. It was the card, yeah. Activate that card, nope. yeah. He goes, I don't understand. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so... He, I, I couldn't come up with another way to... I, I kept saying the same things over and over. I get you. I get oh, you. Oh, I was super frustrated with me. I couldn't communicate. No, it wasn't you. And then... If, again... It just led to, like, ay, ay, ay. And then I had got pulled from the table that I was on. 
and I get I, I don't, so I don't love it when you leave. So you had a bad night. No, I had a great night, but I okay, don't like it when you like leave. Okay, it sounds like you had a bad night. No, I don't like it when you leave. I'm just saying, you said making it sound like you had a bad night. I had a great night. Okay. I had a great night. But just I tried. Don't leave. I tried not to. Somebody else you need to talk to about that. Because <laughs> I, like I tried. I tried. I mean, like I last tried. time you were gone, you were at a convention, and that was fine, because. Doug and Emily were there carrying me through my stress times, <clears throat> and they did again last Kamas night. Commas Con, David. Commas Con. Yes, that's uh, what we're doing next. Spring Commas Con, that's coming up this week, yes. Well, no, next week, because this is still this week. We're not supposed to argue about that anymore. We're, we're, uh, he, he kept it going. He put T-H-I-S in capitals. <laughs> he poked the bear. Yeah, David knows how I feel about this and next. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh... <coughs> um... I had a great, great, great game night. So many good experiences. We are still on this weekend. Yeah, 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 whatever. Next weekend is Comus Con. Very soon. And I'm super, we had a great, great, great game night. We had a lot of new people. Um, that made me happy. We had a lot of good games out. It wasn't like people were playing Uno. Mm, 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 mm. Um, it was great. It was super fun. Uh, Vanessa says, I could see Imperial Miners not being good for beginners. It's light for seasoned gamers, but the engine building could be confusing for new players. Well, here's the thing, and this is kind of what I found. Um, people who get hung up on the wording of yes. things. People who get hung up. And, and I, I was, he actually, the guy you were talking about, actually caught some of the things that I was telling them to do wrong. Mm -hmm. Because he was, because he said things like, well, no, that card says that you can you can uh, move up to this many. And this right. one just says advance too. Right, right. And so those two seem different. And I was like, you're right. It is absolutely correct. Absolutely. So those kinds of gamers are great to have around. And they're great games to, great people to play games with. Um, but in a game like Imperial Settlers, Settlers, there's Imperial so miners. many. Uh, yeah, I'm, it comes from, it's in the Imperial Settlers universe. Imperial Miners, there's so many of those cards going around that um, it's overwhelming, mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. It's just overwhelming. When you have that much text to uh, get to. So I, I made the mistake of, of uh, uh, encouraging us to play Imperial Miners because in my mind, I'm thinking you just play the card, you do what it says, and then you move up. This is easy. But because there's so much text and because so many cards have so different text, it's overwhelming. So that was an eye-opening experience for me. So that, that, was a, that was a cool thing. I need to be a little bit more... Um, uh, I need to pay attention to those little details a little bit better. So I also learned that even on a game that I think is super easy or easy to understand because Sam teaches me and he's a great teacher... I'm not as good a teacher at it. Mm. So um, I struggled to teach Marvel Dice Throne, which can't be a hard game. You taught it twice. How did you struggle to teach it? They were playing the game. They were they, play Each group I taught did play the game. They were playing the game. And enjoyed the game. So they, it, it couldn't Again, have been. there's just these nuances in the rules right. that it's impossible to know all the nuances. Right. It's especially especially in a game like Marvel Dice Throne, right. where each you hero have has all each these hero different, has you know, all these different. Know. You can't memorize all of them. No, and I and I'm trying to teach by <clears> leaning <throat> over their shoulder and trying to. Whatever, mm -hmm. I, it was fine. I'm very grateful that I got to teach. Two Tom games. says we played Let's Go to Japan twice last night. Marybeth beat me both times. <laughs> nice. I mean, not nice. No, Sorry, that Tom. is absolutely nice. Sorry, Tom. Um, there's no such that. thing as too much text after you've played Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh! is a card, a card game. game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that is probably true, but um, most I would say most people have not played Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, in that fashion. I did get to play a new... I played two new games for me last night that were both fun. Mm. Uh, we should get that to the table this weekend. Oh, okay. Yeah. Talk about David. Um, talk about the games you played. I gotta, I, I I gotta, played. I'll be right back. Okay. And check ow, that ow, everyone's... Ow. No, 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 you're fine, okay. you're fine. Don't worry about that, just um, talk. I'll be right back. 
I, I played two new games last night. Um, I Let's played Cartagena, which is like a pirate racing game to the island of La Tortuga. And that was really fun. Um, and then I played, mm, Doug, you'll have to help me out on the name. I played the panda game, and it was called, I have a note, Takinota, maybe? Something. It was about pandas in the garden and um, eating the bamboo and traveling around and building the little hexes. I thought that one was really fun, too. Um, I'm really grateful for all of you that watch and that know me <laughs> and pick out games for me that you know I'm going to enjoy. So that makes me very happy. Um, it does. It, it feels very personal. So both of those two games were... Uh, were from other people's collections, and I got to play them, and I really enjoyed that. Uh, I did get a little harried, like, as I was running around trying to be the hostess and <sighs> trying to play games at the same time. Um, but um, that was it was fun. I, I actually really liked both games I played a lot. They were super fun. Uh, I think, actually, my daughter Daphne would really have liked the panda game Taki Nota, Taki Yoka, Taki something, Taki. Um, that was really fun. I think she would have enjoyed that. And uh, at Cartagena. So I played two new games. By the way, I have played a lot of new games this month so far. And we are only at the 13th, not even halfway through the month. Yeah, Monday's the 15th. So... That's cool. Uh, I'm, I told Sam how excited I am that I get to learn new games and play alongside him. And that's really fun. That's all. I can't see cameras. Uh, takinoko. Takinoko. See? Okay, now i got to change my notes. I had... Oh. It was close. I had it close. I had all but two letters. <laughs> but what's two letters? White Castle. Come back. Did the kids eat breakfast? Is that what you did? Um, Daphne and Dante are up. I mean, Daphne and Aiden are up pretty. Okay. I didn't see Dante. Okay. He might have already eaten. I don't know. So. Cool, cool, cool. All righty. Have you played Imperial Settlers or Minds of the Empires of the North? No. Were you talking about that? No. Imperial Miners? No. Okay. Well, maybe that's I talked about us. Cartagena. Takanoko. Takanoko. I called it something else. I made up the name. Mm. Uh, let's see. That was a fun game. Yeah, Takanoko. That, played... that is actually good. We own that. So I thought we did. Yeah, it looks nice. familiar, the box, but I don't know where it is or anything. It's but up there. That one was fun. And then I played Cartagena. Cartagena? <laughs> Not Cartagena. Soy gringa. I said, I said Cartagena. Soy gringa. Yeah, soy gringa is right. Learning new games is a lot of fun. When you have friends with vast gaming collections, you get to play a lot of new games. Yes. And okay. Sam's a great teacher for me. Tim Prince um, is here. Hello, Tim. Hi. Luis Loza. Last night I played White Castle. Nice Euro game. Yeah, I haven't played that yet. You missed the earlier comment. V Emily is volunteering to pick up kids on game night. <laughs> Sam doesn't have to leave. Ah. Okay. Cool. We might take you up on that because I don't like it when you leave. But when we have somebody. I know. Daphne should have driven. I didn't realize that you had asked her and she couldn't or didn't. It wasn't a couldn't. I should have gotten involved. Didn't, didn't want to. <sighs> um, well, we'll see well, about that. Or, Hopefully what we should have done have to, is probably, happen. even if Sam had to leave, we should have had Doug should have stepped in to Imperial Miners instead of me. <laughs> 
Because <laughs> had... all I did is make the poor guy okay. frustrated. All I texted was... Uh, yeah, no, you didn't tell me to do anything. They I, were kind I just, of doing I just it. told you to... To, um, to check in on them. Yeah, just to and check I in And I did, and they were in this huge debate about activate and the card <clears throat> and what does it mean. And, and so when I, I got, tried to help. That must have like, been right before I got back. I don't know. Because <laughs> that's... That was the first question he asked me. Hey, and he hadn't done his turn yet because it, it <laughs> mattered. And it did. It did matter. So he said, what does this mean? Activate a card. And it was one of the event cards. Yeah. Which is another thing. So it, <clears throat> he didn't know if it meant that if he activated it during his turn, he would not be able to activate it again. That's one of the, I think that was his hang up. Mm. Because that's what he that's why he hadn't done his turn yet. Because if he would not have been able to do that, he wasn't going to activate it during his turn. So he wanted to make sure that he would be able to do it twice. And he would have been able to mm -hmm. do it twice. And so that's what I had to explain to him. So um and and it, it, it means a lot because it meant that he was going to get a truck load of gold. Of yes. gold. Yes. And I because he had, I can't remember what they were called. He had a card in his mind that allowed him to get, like, a lot of, I swear. <laughs> yeah. If you didn't go out there when you weren't supposed to. Max. In. Come on, Max. Get in here. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Okay, our cat last night was crazy. And then this morning he darted out into the garage. I was like, you stupid cat. And he was insistent upon going in the garage. So now as we're on the live, I'm outside in the garage. Dummy. Scratching at the door Make trying to come in. So <laughs> Sam tries to let him in and he runs from Sam, runs back in the garage. So now Sam and my fluff are in the garage. <laughs> Here, show Max. Max. Look at the heathen. <laughs> the heathen. <coughs> oh, are you a heathen? Are you cold? Are you outside too long? You should be cold. I hope you are cold, you little furball. <laughs> he sneaks out into the garage. Then he deposits fur all over my wife. Ugh. Oh. <laughs> no. No, stop. Ew. Oh, so much for cats. Yeah. What are they good for? Absolutely nothing. Oh, okay, enough of that. Focus. Games are the most fun when you don't have to set up and put away. I don't believe that. I don't agree with that. I like setting up games. It's a little bit of a... It's not... Depends. If it's like a super like detailed setup, yeah, those can be stressful. But more often than not, setting up, I like making sure everything's straight and it's a very satisfying experience, <laughs> setting up a game. <coughs> um, but, or just leave Aiden to wander the streets aimlessly. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. I know you were joking, Doug. I know. Next really? new game for me to learn is Above and Below, as I discovered it after Near and Far. Very cool. Yeah, we've got near and far over there, still in shrink, self of shame. I bought it for Dante one year because he liked the other one so much. Is um, it that one? No, that's not it. And uh, stop you two. He has not yet wanted Come to here. play it. Oh, he will now. Next. Uh, okay, I already said that. Um, so let's go ahead and do an unboxing. Uh, I need to get up again. Crack. <laughs> Dante um, actually said last night, because he kind of got on a table with a bunch of Daphne and her friends. And he was like, um, I would like to play some new games. I, I don't want to play Century Golem again. I want to play like hard new games. Yeah. I was like, I know. And he goes, now they want to play Cheese Thief. And now they want to play the same games that we always play. All right, so we're going to do an unboxing. You're not using your fancy knife anymore that I got you? Uh, actually, I don't know where that is now. I found this. I found the old G. The old G. Um, but uh, we got this in from 25th Century Games. 
and I know what it is, but I blacked it all out so that you guys would know what it is. <laughs> and I'm gonna do this. Oh so you can't see it. Na 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 boo boo. This is one of Jesse's favorite games. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she fell asleep to this one. Not really, but she definitely wanted to. This is a production copy of Nova Roma. Um, just, just look at the back and just, my heart starts racing. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. Just looking at the back of the box made, makes her heart flutter. See? She loves this game. I love it. Uh, game, de game designed by St Stanislav Kordonsky, Stan, Stan Kordonsky. Kordonsky. Uh, he did Resurgence. He's, he did... Um, uh, Endless Winter, he did, uh, what's the one? Um, Rurik, Dawn of Kiev. So, great designer. And uh, this is a uh, collaborative published published by uh, 25th Century and Half a Kingdom Games. Half a Kingdom Games is Stan's uh, publishing company, basically. So, uh, I'm interested to, uh, we've, we've, we only have a um, prototype version of this. And I'm interested to see how close the prototype is to the, the production. production copy. So cool. that's why we wanted to go ahead and uh, open this up. So, see, that's just so much better, even than the better, it's so much better My than fancy the, knife. a fancy knife. So much better. It just works so much better. But anyway. Um, have all that out, and mm, I like the box. Yeah, it is neat. The box is really nice, although the box doesn't have any of the game stats on it. That's interesting. It, I think it does on the back. No, on the back, yeah. I'm just talking, excuse me, I'm talking about like on, on the, the side. sides. Mm. You know, usually they'll put... All right, so there we have Nova Roma. Ooh. So the uh, rule book first. Oops. Rule book first. We'll go ahead and just show it real quick. How everything's set up on the on the board. How you set up your own player area. There is a lot of setup to this one. This is one of the games to set up. It's a little stressful mm. because there's a lot of little things here and there. Um, so I don't necessarily enjoy setting this game up a lot, but I really do enjoy the game. And I think Brian really enjoys this game, too. He's a huge fan of Roman games. Um, <clears throat> but a lot of text. Uh, but, I mean, there are smaller graphics showing you what it's talking about. And a lot of, I like it when publishers provide a list with numbers on them, and yeah. that number corresponds to something on the graphic yeah, so like that, that you know what you're supposed to be looking at while they explain it. So there's a lot of that in the book. So that's one of the cool things that I And the text like is about. big, and the pictures are good. Yeah. So all of the different um, <coughs> um, courtyard squares that you use are explained well as well. So... Estate Tile Index, Solo Rules. That's something I haven't done. I haven't played this game solo yet. So maybe I'll have to do that now. So, and then an action reference sheet on the back. So, cool beans. Ooh, look at all the punch outs I'm going to get. Yeah, look at all the punch outs is right. Um, but this is the board. We'll do the board first so that we can kind of see how the board looks. So this is the straight way up. I'll make it a little bit. So over here, you're basically building out uh, different aspects of the empire. You're building do different kinds of buildings. Uh, this is like an area majority uh, type thing. So the person who has the most squares over here 
Uh, we'll get five points in the game, three and one, uh, six, four, two, seven, five, three. Uh, this is like a sailing around the Mediterranean uh, thing where you can uh, unlock points and unlock new cards and uh, sk score more points. So if you sail around here, the first person here gets 14 points, second person gets 12, third person gets 10. You can also go this way. And then this, yeah, and you can also go over up around this way. But this spot, if you get over here, is always worth 10 points. First and second get higher. Uh, and I'll, you're also going to be getting other points and <coughs> all that kind of stuff here. <coughs> Down here is the... Uh, the chariot races, so there's there's ways to compete for this. You actually have to kind of consume horses um, to go forward on these, which is kind of strange, but that's what the chariot races are all about. This is like the main part of the board where you're going to be placing your your um, your workers is basically what it's going to be able to do, and it'll be able to do this action and this action, whatever it is. Uh, and if you place more people in the column or row, then when that second person goes out, you'll actually fire that twice or you'll fire this twice, depending on how many workers you have in the row and the column. Um, there are some uh, workers that you can hire into your people down here. And there's just a lot going on. There is a lot going on in this game, but it is a very good design. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a really good game. And it's one of those that I really enjoy playing. Oops, see, now I'm No, you did it right. wrong. You have to do half-half okay. and then half it. Re really? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's that. That's the board. And then these are the actual player boards. Let me put it over. Yeah, I'll put it over here. <laughs> And uh, these are the actual player boards. So this will be Pink's player board. And you've got, um, this is like a track for your resources over here. Um, so you'll have uh, five different uh, pieces, a wheat, a wood, a stone, like pottery and horses. And you'll be able to move those up and down this track here for how many you have of that resource. Um, here is where you're going to be putting uh, a number of different uh, uh, um, uh, tokens that will do kind of the same thing. When you put your dude there, he'll be able to fire off in other spaces and, and get these types of resources. There's a lot going on. I know. There's a lot going on. This is another part of your board, your, your player board, that will go right next to your... Let me put it down here so people can see it better um, so this is basically what your player board will look like you'll have pieces on it of course but then you'll have these three rows oh that's that's actually interesting these were actually squares mm -hmm. in the prototype so that's one way that it's different they instead of having a bunch of different squares they have rows that you're you'll be able to put into your uh, so that's a that's a good thing. That was one of the things I didn't like about it was because each one of these was one little square, and you had to kind of fit them all in there. They fit well, but but anyway, you'll have all of these things in here at different times. Whoops, wrong. Two and one, and um, depending upon the like, if you get these three. Um, accomplished, then you get these things down here. If you get these three accomplished, you get this thing over here. Um, if you get these accomplished, you get this one over here. So it's just a different thing. When you finish this row, you're going to score five points at the end of the game. Finish this row, you get three points and so forth. So it's a lot of really cool stuff, modular type ways to score points. But that's what basically this is. Um, you have a whole bunch of these uh, sheets that are going on. Um, this, this looks really nice. I like it. Um, so this is just the cardboard stuff. And then we have all of the wood. Here are the cards. The cards have really good um, artwork on them. It's uh, the Miko Me too. that's doing this. But Mama, I want to say hi to the proper, to the to my brother. Fine, I'll be, I'll be. All right, so here's the artwork from... Yeah, they did have nice artwork. 
uh, let me go. So, a lot of the, you know, same kind of artwork used on some of them, but, but uh, it still is, it's good artwork. And it's what you have come to expect from the Miko. Um, so it's, it's really good artwork. I like it. So I'm just setting these out so you can kind of see it. Is that going to show up? Yeah, it's going to show up. Good. Um, and then right up here. And there's the player aids. Where's the other ones? Ah, mm. uh, I don't have a... Grapefruit knife. I don't need a grapefruit knife. On cards, you have to be careful. I know. Because you can mess up the card. These are the sailing cards. Sailing cards. So, uh, and they, you know, they have different artwork on some as you go throughout. But it's basically just a couple of different uh, illustrations. But um, not a whole lot. But that's the sailing cards there. And then these are the different building cards. So this is a a uh, square um, you can put your uh, thing out in the square um, this is a so there's a little bit of a polyominal thing going on this is for the uh, area control part that was uh, over there and you also have other shapes like just doubles and I believe there's also singles as well so just a lot of different kinds of buildings that you can build I think you're gonna like this game again we need to play this game again when you're actually awake that was the problem when we played this the last Start time. Start at 9.30 at night, I'm going to tap out. Yeah, we played doesn't it matter really what late. the game is. You start at 9.30 at night, I'm going to tap out. Yep, yep, yep. It could be something as easy as whatever, and I, think I will tap out. Um, it was also a lot for my brain to process. Then you have some big pieces. Kong Kong. Oh no. So that big old thing. And then you have the Emperor and a couple of Centurions. Um, I think the Centurions are used in solo play. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Centurions are used for. But these are just like, you know, meeples, but they're printed, and they're really cool. I like them. They're big, chonky ones, too. Um, here are the pieces I was telling you about that go on your player board that just track all of your different resources. So that gives you an idea there. And these are your workers that you'll be using within your, um, within your, on your player board. Uh, and you can have, I think, up to three or less of these. So they have a pretty cool looking stance there, just a, a dude with a hammer on his back. But you get the idea. And then, are you bored over there? You look bored. No. You look bored. No. These are the ships that come in the game that you use in the uh, nautical area of the board. Uh, and there's two of each because you can have one on each of those two different tracks that we showed you uh, for each of the different player colors. It comes with a great amount of silica gel too, it looks like. Silica gel. And then, and yeah, those pieces. are the cubes. Those yep. are the cubes that we'll use in the, uh, um, in the area control section of the board. So if you put out a, if you put out a, you know, if you buy a two length building, then you'll take two of your things and you'll put it in whatever configuration you want to in those boxes on the thing. If you buy a three, then you'll put you know, a three a three banger out there. If you buy a four, then and that's how the uh -huh. that how it, that's how it goes. Um, I remember. 
Huh? I remember. I think I actually think you'll enjoy this game. You just we just played it at the wrong time of the day for you. I really do. It was a lot. Because you were able to grok everything. It, you were just tired. Everybody. I actually that. tapped out at the end. I was like, I don't know. Just I finish don't care. it. Just, just do, it do for something. Me. Just do it for me. Or tell me what to do and I'll do it. I, yep. I was very over it. So and we'll put all this stuff back together. Kabing kabing. But I I I think this design is really good. I really enjoy it. And it's probably one of the heavier games that I like. Um, but I like a lot of Stan's games. I don't know what it is. Um, just one of those awkward, not really awkward, but yeah, I know. Uh, one of those strange things where you don't really like heavy games, but you find one designer mm -hmm. that makes heavy games and you like his stuff. That's what it is for me. Um, I mean, uh, so these are all of the different workers that you actually put in, and all the different workers have little special abilities that they can do for you throughout the game. So. That's how that works out. Uh, but that is the production copy of Nova Roma. Super exciting. Yeah. That's cool. You have more. You just can't. Huh? You have cards. Eh. Eh. Whoosh. Whoosh. This is not how Sam puts things back I'm going to put it together later. I'm going to do it later. I'm just, just letting gonna, everybody know. This is not, not how Sam does it. on screen this. right now. Oh, that's in the shot. Not going to do that. There we go. So that was an unboxing of Nova Roma, a co-publication from Half a Kingdom Games and 25th Century. 25th Century is the are the cool cats that sent it to me. So thank you to uh, Chad for that. Um, all right, so let's see here. What have we got? Games are the most fun when you play them after you set them up instead of leaving them set up on the gaming table in the hopes you'll have time to play it and then having to pack up the table. <laughs> you are correct, David. You are absolutely correct. The grapefruit knife has returned. It was on his desk. I have the power. It was under a bunch of stuff on my desk. That's an important. Uh, I yeah, my desk is a looks like a tornado hit it. Um, ba -bum -bum. I played Nova Roma once. I liked it. The action grid is neat. Yeah, that's one of the cool things, and that's yeah. what you kind of find with. Um, Stan Stan likes to use grids. Hmm. He likes to use grids um, because Resurgence has the when you're building up your your uh, your base, that's a grid, hmm. and it's actions that you can go do. Um, but it's not like this one. This one is you get to do the row and the column. That one is you have to place a worker on this specific spot and you get that specific action. Right. But I have found that he does like to use a lot of grids. So that's interesting. It's a linear thinker. Yeah. Um, love the Miko artwork. Yeah, it is it's really so pretty. Good. Headed out to breakfast, <laughs> Doug says, with one of the new couples from Steamers last night. See you in a few hours. So fun. That's good. I like that. I yeah, do we too. met oh, Aurora nice. and Matthew. Matthew. Yeah. Who was the guy in the blue? I didn't. The guy in the blue? Yes. The guy in the blue. Blue shirt. Blue t blue t-shirt. Blue t-shirt. His wife had the Dungeons and Dragons shirt on. That is Jonathan. Uh -huh. Those are the ones who live in town that go to our church. That's what I thought. That we've never met. Um, we have a big church. But yeah, she she actually <clears throat> runs D and D campaigns, uh, and I can't remember her name. Um, Jonathan and blank. Um. I'm going How to. How fun is that? That I just accepted her as a as a fr Facebook nice. friend. How fun is that? That we host game nights to build community, and Doug and Emily are meeting with people that they just met that they last met night. last night yep. at game night to have breakfast as a community. Like 
I love that. I love that. I love community. I love connections. Yeah. I love it. it makes me super happy. Um, let's see. I'm trying. Here's the thing. When you, ex and this is just a little mini rant, when you send people invites to be friends on Facebook, Facebook alerts you and it stays in your um, notifications when they have accepted your Facebook friendship status. But if you accept theirs, it, yes. it doesn't stay in your, in your notification feed that they asked you to be friends. That's what I don't like about it. I don't it. understand the difference. I don't know what you're talking about. You said the when same When you thing. initiate the friendship mm -hmm. and they respond to your initiation, your, your notification feed keeps that in it, in its timeline. Hmm. But if you accept somebody else's in, uh, initiation, it doesn't keep that you accepted their friendship request. It only... Never, well, I'm I mean, I, no, 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 I, I get it, but I don't know why it matters. Because I'm trying to find the person's name, and I can't remember oh, her name. Oh, got it. Okay. <laughs> I don't have a <laughs> I was steel like, vault like this... yours. You're kidding me. I do not have um, a steel vault. I'm clueless. You leader. remember names like it's posted in front of your eyeballs 24-7. Especially if I can associate them with a kid. If they're a kid's parents, I got it. Yeah, that's true. Even, see, and, and it doesn't even show up in, like, they should have, like, new friends in the friends area. But no, it just puts them all in there. And there's no real rhyme or reason to how they list it. Why can't you list your friends alphabetically? You do if you search friends, I think. I don't know. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go because I've been talking to her husband on Facebook Messenger, and their last name is Kelly. Okay, oh, you're giving too I'm much information online about people. No, I'm not. <laughs> That's not anything. His... Oh, I just couldn't remember their names. I, I barely met them because I was doing other things. Jonathan and... Jonathan and Krista. Krista. That's what it is. Krista. Jonathan and Krista. Yep. Okay, cool, and, cool, cool. And uh, they, were, they, were, they were good people, too. I also like the fact that some of these people have been coming, and I get hugs, and, like, it, I don't know. I love it. It makes me super happy. <clears throat> See? It works. This morning, you woke up excited and happy. I did not. <laughs> I did not want to get up this morning. Yeah. She's waking me up this morning, and she's... She's, I can't even remember the, it was like a freaking mantra. <laughs> kind of. Like one of those things that you <laughs> we, have. <clears throat> when I was in the Czech Republic, we had a very different teaching style. But this was the school I was at. And uh, um, we let these adults take a nap in the middle of the day because we had to rest their brains so they could get more English in because it was like an intensive English course. And then we would put them to sleep with, you know, you are relaxed and warm and comfortable your legs are relaxed, and warm, and comfortable. And we'd work through the muscles all the way up the body. And then when they, we would wake them up, we would wake them up with, um, it, and it was in their speakers, in their headphones that they were all wearing. And Okay, first of all. Uh, they also I mean, had LED pause, lights. Pause, so. pause, pause. <laughs> first of all, I can't sleep with headphones on. Right. There is absolutely no way. I mean, you're not rolling over. I'm They're gonna, just laying there. Like, okay. Also, can't just sleep like a dead person. <laughs> good, can't sleep like a dead person. So that's strike two. <laughs> strike three, I've got somebody talking in my ear while I'm trying to go to sleep. Oh, yeah. And we woke them no. up in the morning with vocabulary in oh, the... Oh, my So gosh. in the morning, it would be like, one, yedna, am... two, divai, three, setsi. Through the speakers in their bedrooms. That was their alarm clock. Anyway, we would wake them up. And the, the voice would come on. You will wake up feeling refreshed and happy and excited. You will wake up feeling refreshed, happy, 
and excited. You will wake up, <laughs> load your weapon, and pull the trigger. Stop, reload, and pull the trigger again. That's what I'm thinking <laughs> if I hear that. So I tried I'm that like, with Sam I'm this trying morning. to sleep. I said and so. you've been talking to me for the last three hours, and I can't go to sleep. Oh, no. They would hit that vocabulary and the LED lights with that replicated REM sleep, <clears throat> and they would zonk out. You worked for the government. I did. <laughs> you worked for the government. The, the Czech, Czech government. Republic <laughs> government is like brainwashing their no, people no, to become did, sleeper agents the, in they America. Had the sleep LED masks that represented REM sleep. So even if you weren't sleeping, your body totally felt like you got REM and you were rested. So they would wake up. You are rested. The winter Happy. soldier is real. <laughs> Happy and excited. So I tried that with Sam this morning. Look, he's in a much better mood. <laughs> he's chipper. Not now. He's You're chipper. using Czech Republic Winter Soldier tactics <laughs> he's on me. He's chipper. He woke up happy and excited. It works. Yeah, exactly, Vanessa. <laughs> was Jesse in a cult? <laughs> no. I did work at a very unique school, though. <laughs> unique. <laughs> yes. It was an intense English course in which we would bring these business people way out to our farm, way out, where nobody had cell reception, there were no computers, there was no connection, and we did lessons all day with English speakers all day. We cooked with them, we ate with them, um, we spoke at our normal rate of speed, and these poor people would just be like deer in the headlights after day three. They spoke, some of them we had different levels, and, and you know, you would come at different levels, and. We did vocabulary, and then we would do lessons for like an hour and a half, and then we would go out in the barn and take our drums, <laughs> and we would drum our vocabulary as they were marching around the inside of the barn. So the answer to your question is yes. <laughs> no. no. I taught the English answer to your in an question. intensive English program. They also had fire walking, but that was after I, <laughs> I left. Unique school, a.k.a. <laughs> cult. <laughs> They exactly, added David. the fire walking and the walking across the coals after I left. I didn't do that. You had some freaky people. <laughs> it was, but the drumming to vocabulary took me a while to get to used to. I would have never gotten used to that. And we did stretching with our fingers and Tai Chi every morning. And, but the drumming of vocabulary is something I will never forget. Like we'd have these people walking around, adults walking around the circle in this interior, like, arena, covered arena, and they're doing the... No, they're d drumming, drumming. Like, actually drumming with a drum or a tambourine, and they're saying the vocabulary. Mm -hmm. Eat, ate, eaten. <laughs> beat, beat, beat. They're doing verbs. Or they're doing... <laughs> like... Anyway, during that, we told them to wake up rested, happy, and excited. <laughs> Sleep with one eye open. <laughs> it was not a cult, but it was a very unique teaching experience. It was. Mm hmm they also came under fake names. Cult. <laughs> they came under fake names and fake professions. What did I miss? <laughs> so I taught people whose name was Robert Redford or Ringo Starr or Harrison Ford, Homer Simpson. I don't know why anybody would want to be called Homer Simpson. I know. I know. Guy is a doof. I know. I mean, it's a stereotypical do. I had, I, I, they got to choose their own name. And the whole week that they were there, they were there a week at a time. And that was their name. Homer, Harrison. <laughs> I'm going to take you there someday. So you can see my school. That is a threat. 
not a threat. That I was a threat. They used to Sam blink rapidly if you need help. <laughs> Oi. I was Morse coding SOS. Nobody I picked up on it. I heard it and I ignored I you. No, I know, because you know there's nothing that anybody can do. <laughs> Look, you are rested, happy, and excited. Stop using those words. You're freaking me out. You're gonna, you're gonna see me in the news that I like <laughs> held up a Tim Hortons in Canada yeah. somewhere, and did something and stole a whole bunch of donuts for no reason. <laughs> this is why. Ah, uh, things you learn on a live stream. Life is right. fun. Life is fun. The things you learn on a live stream. That's okay, what else exactly do we got going correct. on? I have to watch my back when I go to sleep at night and put these LED strobe lights the on LED my head. The LED things were weird. They were weird. <laughs> no, don't back up now. You were no. all in a few minutes ago. I never, I just, I was a teacher. I didn't program. We also did skits at night. We had summer camp. Mm -hmm. We did singing. Mm -hmm. You were part of the, you were part of the machine. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You were an agent. You weren't a teacher. I was not. I know what's up. <coughs> you mean you didn't teach like that in Korea? No. <laughs> Do you realize how many reports we would have had written up on us if we would have put LED strobe light headbands with and put our five-year-old Korean children to sleep? We didn't. These were adults. I know. That's the These scary part. These men, or big old beer bellies. It wasn't Black Widow. It was Winter Soldier. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> Hello, Derek. <laughs> Help yeah. me. This is the conversation I walk into, Glenn Just. Asks. You never know. Yeah, you never, absolutely, you never know. You never know. That was Sam's fault. He started that. I didn't start anything. You're the one that was talking this morning about Dvai and Siete and all this other. I don't know whatever you were talking about. It was pretty. The, the waking up these poor people up. I mean, and I, I will say, so while I was there for a while, I decided to take an intensive German course the same from the same school. So I could see what my students were experiencing. Mm -hmm. I did not make it a week. I made it three days and told the German lady to bite me, and I walked out. And I was like, "Because you realized what was going on." This is hard. No, it was so hard, and yeah. I could not. I was like, you're "Nope, I'm out." Brainwashing your students. So I woke up. They set the alarm for me to wake up, so you hear the German vocabulary words in your head. Like, I was like, "This is hard. It hurt my brain. It was so hard." So the the rest time is literally like. Oh my gosh, I can't even, like my brain is just overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. I didn't even make it three days. I think I made it two and a half. I was like, nope, I'm out. You're going to hear about it in the news soon. <laughs> Czech Republic citizen. Hampson School. Homer Simpson Hampson. infiltrates the Pentagon. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's coming. You're going to hear it. Uh, what do you think about... Uh, United DC coming this summer to GameFound. Well, I wasn't a huge fan of Marvel United. I don't like chibi miniatures either. So Marvel United has absolutely zero draw for me. I know a lot of people like it. I know a lot of people enjoy it, but it has absolutely like almost negative zero um, uh, draw for me. So I couldn't care less about uh, DC United. Um, what is United? It's a game? Yeah, it's a miniatures game. Um, tabletop miniatures. Um, one of the things that we actually uh, did for Monster Fight Club, their scenery, yes. the yes. monster scenery, a lot of that is almost uh, the exact correct um, oh. scale. Oh. And so we sold a lot of that stuff oh, to okay. Marvel United character uh, people. Or, or at least, I don't know right, if we right, sold a lot there, but that's the that was a demographic that we went after. <laughs> um was uh, Marvel United players. So 
Um, it, it's a miniatures game. The miniatures look cool. They're it's good production. It's Simon. It, it's great stuff. It's just not a game that I'm interested mm. in because I don't like chibi stuff. Uh, and their chibi miniatures, I just don't. I don't like chibi miniatures. Mainly because I think, in order to do chibi miniatures well, you have to be able to paint the eyes well, and chibi eyes have to be painted a certain way, and I cannot do it. I cannot do it. Mm. So early on, I was like, nope, not doing these anymore. <laughs> um, I can't remember what game it was, but it was we did, um, we did a whole bunch of miniatures for that. Me and Rob on our battling brushes. Oh yeah. Thing when I was with the dice tower. And he actually was able to turn them out pretty well. I was just like, I can't do these stupid eyes. And, the, and if you don't get the eyes right, the entire model looks stupid. Hmm. It's just that way. So, at least with me. Anyway. I can count to ten in German. Eins, zwei, drei, vier, fünf, sechs, sieben, acht, neun, zehn. Um, elf is eleven. Zwölf is twelve. Mm-hmm. Drei sein, vier sein, fünf sein, sechs sein, sieben sein, acht sein, neun sein, zwanzig is twenty. Mm -hmm. And then it's ein und zwanzig, drei und zwanzig, zwei und zwanzig, on up. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember what thirty is. Dreisig? Sure. I think so. I think it's dreisig. Anyway, yeah, I lived in Germany for four years, three and a half, four years, and... That's about all I can remember. <laughs> I mean, if it's almost like there's no rhyme or reason <coughs> to some of their words. Right. Yep. But, I mean, unless it has like Hoff after it or before it, right. you know, that's where you can get beer. Yes. Um, uh, chibis are weird looking. I found the game boring too. I've actually never played the game. That's how little I'm interested in it. Mm. Uh, I, I have no no. I think I think JT actually has it too. Oh really? I could be wrong. Yeah, but I don't. I think he does. But um, I've just never never been interested in it. The amount of expansions they have for that game is criminal, and that's another reason why. Because it's almost like Marvel Zombies. Because uh -huh. you take our Marvel Zombies, it's on. It's in one box. Right. Then you look at JT's Marvel Zombies. Right. It's like. <laughs> Same thing with DC United or Marvel so United. So you can get all these different expansions. Yes. All the different superheroes, all the different stuff. And it's like, literally, it's like drinking from the fire hose. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, I, you can't afford to drink from the fire hose with every game that you purchase. It's just, it's unsustainable. Uh, I forgot that you didn't really like United Marvel. Uh, what's your fave Marvel game? Uh, I believe it was Arcadia Quest, David Brownlee. Thank you. Um, uh, what's your favorite Marvel game? I do like Marvel Zombies. I do like that. I don't know that I would consider that a Marvel game, though. I do like the unmatched Marvel box sets. But again, that's the unmatched system with just the characters. So I don't really consider that a Marvel game. Um, same think, thing with Dice Throne. But I think the answer is that that those are games with Marvel characters. Yeah, that would be a Marvel game. Uh, yeah, I know. But but, but what, I, what I mean mm -hmm. though is that Marvel United is a Marvel game. I see. Unmatched is not necessarily Marvel. It's an unmatched game. It's an with unmatched Marvel game characters. system with Marvel characters. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a little bit different. I th at least in my opinion, but. Uh, am I missing something? Am I missing... There's a Marvel Smash Up. I haven't played that yet. We need to play that. Oh, we have that up there. I know. I just haven't opened it yet. And I know how to play Smash Up. Um... I don't think I have any other Marvel games. Honestly. Uh... Oh, well, there's Marvel Legendary. That's a good one. Huh. Marvel Legendary is good. Um, so I would say that that would be my top three. Marvel Unmatched, Marvel Dice Throne, and Legendary, a Marvel deck building game. 
You didn't add your Marvel zombies in there. Ah. That would probably be number one. That would be number one. And then um, Marvel Dice Throne would be two. Unmatched would be three. And Legendary would be four. Cool. And I don't have a fifth that I know of right now. Marvel United, X-Men, and Spider-Verse. What about Marvel Champions LCG? No, I'm not an LCG fan. I don't like LCGs. LCG is a living card game. So, a customizable card game, a CCG, uh, or a collectible card game, is um, where you can buy starter decks, mm -hmm. but then you can also buy packs of cards, kind of like how you used to yeah. buy baseball cards and football right, cards. Right, I get that. You can buy packs of cards that you buy that have... You know, some commons, uh, one rare, a couple um, uh, hard to get, right, all right. that kind of stuff. But it's random, random cards. So that's what a CCG is. An LCG, you buy a base, a core set, but then they'll periodically, sometimes it's every month, sometimes it's every quarter, whatever, they periodically come up with another pack of cards. You get the same cards in all of the pack. In, in every pack, and everybody can buy that pack and add it to the game. That's an LCG. Um, TCGs, trading card games, and CCGs, I hate them. I hate, I hate that you're going to be buying a pack and you're going to throw half the pack away because you already have 15 million of those, those cards in them. I hate that. So I don't like CCGs. Um, TCGs, uh, trading card games, same thing. LCGs, I don't like because I want to buy a game and have everything that I, I, I need to play the game, just like that guy over there has all the stuff that he has, and it's the same stuff. And we can play the same game. T LCGs, if I don't keep up, now his game has... All these different things. Uh, all this additional content that my game doesn't have. It's mm -hmm. the same game, but two different levels of content in it. And I don't like that. So, I, a living card game, I'm more willing to try to jump into, but I really have to enjoy the game. If I don't, it's a card game. I'm not interested, generally speaking. Hmm. Um... That was the answer to Tim's question. What about Marvel Champions LCG? Okay, I, I focused on the LCG part. I have played Marvel Champions. Uh, I think uh, JT taught us how to play one time. We played a four game. Yes, a four I do player game this. of it. Yes. And I just didn't enjoy it. Um, it just wasn't, I remember that. wasn't fun for me. It was over at their house. It was yep, the four I remember. Of us. See, it's based on moments and memories for me. Yeah. Not about the game. You could say Marvel Champions, and I go, whoosh. Think you can go. <laughs> You know, we played it down at JT's house with the four of us. I'm like, oh, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, that's generally what it is. <clears throat> I remember I had the... I remember some of the characters I had that I was playing, and I was trying to get it, but I remember that. Um, one thing I do want to say uh, to tack on to the end of that LCG conversation, uh, I'm not hypocritical in that, well, what about when you buy... You know, the base game of, of zombie, you know, Marvel zombies and somebody else has their Kickstarter version. Doesn't that drive you up a wall? Yeah, it does. It absolutely drives me up a wall. And I hate, literally, I really dislike the fact that, that Kickstarter projects or GameFound projects are like that. Um, where, because they... You get the special version. Right? They, do it, they do it on purpose because it makes money. Right, I it's get a, that. It's a great way to make money. Absolutely. As long as you're going to be able to deliver it. It's a great because people want more stuff for the game. Totally. And you usually give them a break on the price mm -hmm, on the front mm -hmm. end so that they buy more of it. I get it. It's not sustainable in retail, though. So unless you get on the front end of that bubble, you're going to miss sometimes 75% cool of right, the content right. in the game. And you're only going to be able to experience it if you have somebody else that owns it. I don't like that part of it. Um, I, I would rather have Kickstarter and GameFound projects that are more sustainable in retail and 
that's what you have the plan of doing, putting this stuff into retail, mm -hmm. not just, you know, one timing it on on a crowdfunding project. Uh, do you guys know Matt and Julie Canlis? No, not that I know of. Matt and Julie. Is that Matt? The Matt that? No, I don't think so. Because how do you spell the last name? Canlis. K. Uh, C A N L I S. They live in Wenatchee. A friend sent me her book, A Theology of the Ordinary. On the back of the book, she says she lives there in town. Hmm. Oh, cool. No, I don't. Um, I but look at the book. We'll look it up. Tim Prince, I know the game. I know a game that you used to love to play, Pecunia Not All Way. Yeah. I watched an older Dice Tower, and that was funny. We I just have... did a, a game playthrough of that. Yeah, I don't we did. Know. Month ago? Um, yeah, it's it's right over there. Pecunia Non Ale. I will absolutely play that game again. Yes, I love it. It and I love it for its sophomoric theme and for how goofy you get while you play it. Because you make poop jokes all day long and twice on Sunday. That's just we how did you a do. playthrough on yeah. the Flipside channel. Um, yeah. I don't yeah. know, a month yeah. or so ago. Mm -hmm. Yep, we did. And what was the name of the book? Uh, a Theology of the Ordinary. Haven't read the book yet, but it leaks. It leaks my interest. I've never heard that expression I think before. She meant peaks my interest. Oh, probably so. Yes. I'm sure Wenatchee is a bigger twin than I realized, so you may not know them. Town. It's, it's not. not. <laughs> it's not. Here's here's how small town we are. We have thirty-five thousand in the greater Wenatchee between Valley a couple area. of cities. Be between, yeah. Here's how small Wenatchee is. At the hockey games, mm -hmm. the people behind us are like yelling down to the guy in the penalty box, "Happy birthday, Joe!" Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yep. Uh, here's how small town we are. Um, yep. The uh, former fire chief sits two rows up from us <laughs> and yells, "You're a bum, ref!" At the very first, <laughs> you know, when they chief. first come on the ice. Uh, um, we're we're a small town in that, you know, you go to Fred Meyer and I will see somebody I know, yep. or I'm at Winco. And, Often. Often. Uh, you know, I see parents in my school. Mm -hmm. um, we see people from our church. Uh, <laughs> So we strangers are, are running up and giving her hugs all the time. <laughs> They're not strangers to me. <laughs> strangers to me because I ain't never met them before. I'm like, this is for hugging my wife. What's going on here? <laughs> Only you, baby. Uh, but it is, it is, we're kind of small town. Yeah, there's like 35,000 in. Sorry, spelling One, errors. two, three. <laughs> we got you, Glenn. Wenatchee, East Wenatchee, Malaga, Sunnyside, and... Sunny Slope. Sunny Slope. And do they count <clears throat> Kashmir in that? Maybe. Oh, yeah. Kashmir, um, the place where the pears I, come from. Yeah, I know. We're Manson, Kashmir. Yep. Um, so, in, in these small towns, there's... 35,000. Wenatchee, Wenatchee and East Wenatchee together have about 35,000 people right. combined. Right. And those are actually two cities from two different counties. Right. The, the river divides The river us. divides yeah. the two counties up. Kabuki Kid is here. Hello, hello. Good to see you. I don't know what that was. One of the kids doing something. Hmm. That's Dante. <laughs> 946. <laughs> Cashmere, Q Led Zeppelin. Almost, but not really. Cashmere, Led Zeppelin. You've never heard that song? I, I mean, if I've heard the song, I don't know the name of it. No. I've probably heard the song. Every time I think of the, the town, it's not spelled the same. It's C-A-S-H-M-E-R-E. -E. Uh, it's not... K A S H. -I, I mean, I've, I've probably heard the song. It doesn't mean I know the names of the song. Don't try to be like us cool kids. I'm not like I the know, cool kids. I know. You felt. You, you saw my picture of me being cool. Oh, my goodness <laughs> gracious. <laughs> <laughs> um, how far away is the next town? Well, we live about eight miles out of town. Um, but. 
Wenatchee and Wenatchee and, and East, East Wenatchee, Wenatchee are, are just are, are connected by a ri by the a bridge. It's like literally, the we're the same it, city. It's it's like a thirty second drive. It's yeah. not that different. Um, but but in this valley, we have you know a couple small towns, kind of in this little region. Mm -hmm. Then there are, you know, about an hour north, there's another not biggish town. From here, they get smaller, and then. Uh, you have to go about two and a half hours over to Seattle to get three. big cities. Yakima is two and a half hours. Spokane is three. three hours. So we're kind of in the middle Chelan's of a bunch about of. about an hour away. Yeah, but Chelan's 12,000. Like, yeah, it's small. So there's multiple small towns around in um, northeast Washington, north central Washington. Mm -hmm. Um there are multiple towns around, hours drive away, two hours, Omak, Tenasket. There's, you know, Winthrop and, and all these things that are small towns. It's, it's an but agricultural get, area, so yeah, there's a get, lot of A lot of small orchards, towns, a lot of communities. A lot of that orchards, have small. a lot of wheat fields, mm -hmm. a lot of all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. around here. Um, Waterville. Yeah. It's about a half hour away. Yeah, so there's lots and lots of small towns around. Uh, but but to get to a bigger away. town, you got to drive about three hours. Mm -hmm. But that's the way we like it. Yeah, it's all good. I was, talking to, I was talking to Matthew last night, and he was talking about how he moved over here from... Um, the other side. From the other side. Yeah. And uh, he said they were, they were driving cross-country trying to find some place to live. Yeah. And he, he said they, they were driving through. I think he said they were driving through one day. Uh -huh. And they started looking around. And they're like, why don't we just live here? <laughs> this is a place I can be chill in. Yeah, that's super nice. <clears throat> so my top three favorite games are, Ryan Stewart says, Clank, Space Base, and Res Arcana. Don't know any of those. Um, you've played Clank, I see, I don't a version of Clank with me and JT. It's the one where you got stuck and you couldn't get out of... Oh, the dungeon? Couldn't get, yeah, you couldn't <laughs> get back up to the level. I do um, remember that. See, Space Base you haven't played yet. I don't own it. I think JT owns it. That would be one that you might like. Um, and I know of Res Arcana, but I've never played it, huh. um, and I don't own it. As a fan of Vikings, Sam might only play Zeppelin's Immigrant Song in a loop. <laughs> yes. What? Yes. Puya Ostapur, Ostadpur is here. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Res Arcana is great. I've never, I've never, uh, I've never played it before. Um, I like the way the game looks. Mm. I like the artwork on it. I've just never played it. Uh, Clank and Space Space are awesome. Never played Res. Vanessa says. Yep, yep, yep. Um, she would probably recognize the song, Tom says. Yeah, I, I, know know the song. The I don't know the names. All right. No, you can't play it on here. You'll get I banned. Got, I got five seconds no, or less. No, don't do it. Don't even try. Don't five just stop. We less. can do it later. Mm. You don't need to do that. Okay. I'm not letting you get banned. <laughs> oh, it's just... not banning. It's just that. Yeah, no. Just uh, no. Whatchamacallit. Um, what do they call FCC? it? FCC. I don't know. No, it's just the mon monetization won't work yeah. on this one video. Just, just don't, just don't. <laughs> mm -hmm. Space is my number two game. Mm. The Final Frontier. She's talking about space, space, not actual space. I know. Space. I got you. Okay, cool. Res Arcana is a good one. Kabuki Kid said, same designer Thomas Lehman did race and roll for the galaxy. Roll for the Galaxy is a plus. Race for the Galaxy is a slight minus uh, for me as far as liking Res Arcana. Um, I didn't really... Uh, Race for the Galaxy was a little bit too... It relied too heavily on too many um, icons uh, for me to really enjoy it. I couldn't grasp, and everybody else grasped... Um, how the icons work together a lot faster than I did, which means that I got my butt kicked a lot in it. It's not that I couldn't play it, it's just that I wasn't good at it, so I just didn't really enjoy it that much. 
Uh, Vanessa, I'm thinking we have similar tastes in games. That's probably true. I, I forgot to type base. I type too fast. My brain can't <laughs> keep up. Yeah. Somebody else is like that. I just can't keep up with my own brain. It doesn't no. have anything to do with typing. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't really have anything to do with typing. It has to do with my own brain. <clears throat> Usually I will text Sam via speak on my phone. Is that why? <laughs> That's why they're like super random. I think Siri I just needs go, to work on her listening. And then Sam goes, what? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Because no. she sends it before reading it. I don't. I, and, and then she says, here's what I'm going to send to Sam. I'm like, yeah, yeah, just send it. I don't want to hear it because I know you're going to. And then I have to go back through and try to change just the word or I have to get the right meaning across. And then after four tries, I'm like, no, just send it. Yeah, often I have to uh, have a master's degree in hieroglyphics <laughs> in order to have a chance at understanding some texts. Yeah, that I get it's from. because I, I speak. To text because um, I I process things verbally. Let's see, Ryan, 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 top three favorite. What's your recommendation for another game I might like? I didn't. If those are his top three. I didn't catch that. Okay, I just read the first sentence oh, and I forgot see? to read the second. Got to read the whole thing. Um, yes, Clank, Space, Space, and Res Arcana. Mm. Uh, t -t 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 yes. Memoir 44 is over here. Uh, is that a special edition? No, it's not a special edition. They used to sell the uh, uh, battle bags. I can't remember what they called them, uh, that you could keep your uh, collection in. And they've discontinued selling them, and that's, that's all that is. Um, let's see. I'm looking forward to The Dark Quarter, a game similar to Destiny's. Sam, have you played Destiny's? Yeah. Matter of fact, I played a, um, a prototype copy of Destinies at um, uh, the one in Germany. Essen. Essen. Um, back when Lucky Duck was going to be working with uh, Mythic Games mm. to produce Time of Legends, Joan of Arc Destinies. Uh, so I played a prototype of it back then. I haven't played it since. JT owns it, so I want to get it to the table because I really enjoyed that prototype play. I just... Um, you know, the it. things broke down between Lucky Duck and, and Mythic after that. Um, n not shortly oh, after sorry. that, but after that. So I wasn't ever, ever able to play another uh, version of it. But uh, JT owns Destinies, and so I want to get that to the table. I like it. I like that system. Um, uh, same designer as Clank did Dune Imperium, Paul Denon. Uh, do you want games similar to those? Uh, Tom asks. Uh, let's see here. If you're into Space Base, Bad Company is a fun choice. Bad Company plays similar to Space Base, but has a few more things going on. It's a fun one, yes. I've never played Bad Company. Um, I uh, Clank is kind of a push-your-luck type game. So I, I guess what do you enjoy about those games, Ryan, would be the would be the correct thing to ask, I guess, to go further. Um, because it depends on what you like about Clank. What do you like about Space Base? And I've never played Res Arcana, so those are the two that I'm kind of focusing on. Why do you like those two games? That would be the more, the more important question. Um, than to just say, hey, I like this game. I'm freezing. I gotta go get a Go ahead, sugar. go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. I'm like starting mm. to shiver. Feed the Chicken Gaming, Sam Healy, the man, the myth, the legend. Hey, 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 good to see you. Um, Fantasy Realms. Uh, again, that's another game I've never played. Good, not, there's so many games out here. Um, I have no idea. I, I'm waiting on Ryan to answer my question, though. What what do you like about those games? Uh, I think that'll help me uh, help uh, help you narrow down some other choices. I think um, I'm gonna let the cat into its little room. No, Strider, you don't have to get up. There. Come here, boy. Come on. You need to sit down. 
We're not going anywhere, not yet. I know Mama left. I know Mama left. And you're wondering why. You're wondering why. I know. <laughs> no, you're so tired, bumpers. Um, I didn't care for bad company. People can monopolize a certain number of cards, and the cards are limited in that game, so if someone buys all the sevens, you're not going to get any. Huh. That's, tro that's problematic. <coughs> um, let's see. Sorry. It's so cold. Ah, I'm so cold. Switch over so I can get that in. <clears throat> Tan Hauser for life. <laughs> Tan Hauser. Yes, right here. I got to teach you how to play Tan Hauser. I think you, you would that. like it. I think you might like it. But you're not a military game <laughs> kind of person. <laughs> We, we played Fighters <laughs> of the Pacific yesterday. Uh, well, was it yesterday? Day. I don't know. It was the other day. It was, um, no, it was when you were homesick. And Thursday. We, we did that Thursday morning. And uh, it's actually not a bad game. I think, um, I think my buddy Patrick from, uh, from uh, a guy I always played Memoir yeah. 44 with, I think he would really enjoy it. But Fighters of the Pacific is a World War II aerial battle game but you also have somewhere well i opened it because the cat was standing there going open the portal human oh, i was like i swear I closed he was that literally door. standing there looking at me over the table open the portal human now <laughs> Whew. that was chilly um tannhauser has one of the best lines of sight absolutely that's one of the reasons why I think you'll like it because the line of sight in Unmatched. Yeah, you said it's based same in that. Yeah, yeah. Is the same in Tannhäuser. It's very simple. Um, live play it. Yeah, that probably will happen. Uh, and of course, those people. As a matter of fact, time on our Tuesdays. That might happen this coming week. Okay. Tannhäuser. Tannhäuser on time on our Tuesdays. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I think you should focus on games that only have that nice alliteration. Then. No. <laughs> That's a bit too cheeky, that. Uh, and, of course, those people will choose the seven location for their actions, so you kind of get screwed out of any actions except the base one. Wow. There's some deep-seated animosity there, Vanessa. You should talk to somebody about that. <laughs> she said that she doesn't care for bad company. It's a game because... Right. Uh, people can monopolize certain numbers of cards, and the cards are limited in that game. So if someone buys all the sevens, right, you uh, you're not going any. to get any. And, of course, those people will choose the seven location for their actions, so you kind of get screwed out of any actions except the base one. I could feel <laughs> it building. I could, I could feel it building. <sighs> that narration of Max is spot on. It absolutely is. You have no idea... <laughs> How accurate it is. I'm quite proud of it, actually. <laughs> and what's even worse is that sometimes when he looks at you, he goes cross-eyed. So it's like, put that voice with a cat going cross-eyed. <laughs> Open the portal, human, or I shall claw your arm. That's what it looks like. It's like, you are a crazy old <laughs> fart. You need to stop. <coughs> Oh my gosh, you guys. Uh, such that. a cool hoodie, hoodie. We haven't actually got. Yeah, we don't have the hoodies. We don't have hoodies yet, but, to sell yet, but. Um, um, but we do have. Um, shirts. Shirts. T shirts. And stickers. We are hoping that all of you will tell all your gaming friends to subscribe to our channel because we're trying yeah. to do a, a big push to get to 10,000. So tell your friends, please. Yes, my friend did exactly what I mentioned when we played. <laughs> that was funny. I think you should have put friend in parentheses. My friend. But, uh, yeah, we are doing a push to uh, uh, 10,000. Uh, 10,000 subscribers we are currently at, I believe, 7.11. So tell your friends, please, please. So we've got 2.9 thousand subscribers to go. Until we I, hit 2, when I wear uh, 10, the 000. flip side shirts, they have the QR code on the back. And even last night at game night, I was like, "Yep, there you go, right there. Puya says, give it another chance, Vanessa. It's so fun, and it's not the dice total are always seven. But I right. get you. Yep. Seven is a common number for dice. So. It is. 
It is, it is. That's why it's uh, the thief in Catan. I have a Max on my lap as I type this. My <laughs> one kitty is named Max 2. <laughs> yep. Mm. All right, we've got to get going here in a little bit. Huh? He's coming up. Can you see? I know, he's like, oh, the other fur animal is here in my domicile. How dare he lay down and be so comfortable. I shall <coughs> retreat into my haven, this box. Or not. What are you doing? There is something else that's agitating me. I shall pounce. Oh, I'm going to go scratch at this door. Let me, yes. <laughs> Open this portal, human. Why do you keep closing these things all of the time? <laughs> Hear me! <laughs> Hate the way that cat acts sometimes. <laughs> Last night, neither of us really loved him. But if you make it to ten thousand, maybe I'll try to make my way out to Washington in celebration. Aww, that will be cool. We would love that. First board game vid I ever accidentally watched was Sam Ely reviewing Tannhäuser. Sorry, I'm fanboying a bit. No worries. Aww. thank you. I appreciate I love that. It. That's pretty cool, though. It's funny <laughs> that most of you have known Sam longer than I have. Through the video world. Yes. Yes. They've known of me. Yeah, or I they've watched you, right, or yeah. they've followed you, or more than I have. All right, we've got to get going here in a little bit, because i got to get the Jeep to the uh, shop for an oil change. And we're meeting uh, we're doing some gaming and Emily to uh, do some gaming while the Jeep is being worked on. So we've got to get out of here. So let's do a few minutes of our uh, lightning round. Uh, you currently know him. You certainly know him better, though, Kabuki Kid says. I should hope so. Um, I'm very lucky. Uh, <laughs> Until he thinks I'm in a cult, and then I'm not so lucky. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. It's not in a cult. There's a lot. I'm not saying you're in a cult. I'm just saying you work for the Czech Republic <laughs> government <laughs> in a winter soldier program. That's what you did. <laughs> All right, here we go. Wheat or white bread? White bread. See you later, Tim. Take care, buddy. Wheat or white? White bread. White. Um, and mine would specifically be sourdough. <sighs> if you and I are eating bread. I don't currently eat bread on, on a regular. But if you could. If I could, it would... Probably take the form of a cinnamon roll. That's not bread. It absolutely is. Is bread. white or wheat bread? Is like roll, sandwich bread. Is a roll of bread? Sandwich is bread. Is a roll Sliced, bread. bagged bread. Answer, just answer the question, lady. Is a roll bread? No, a roll is a roll. And if we ain't got no <laughs> tolls, then we can't buy no rolls. No, a roll is made out of bread. If you add cinnamon to it, it doesn't change the fact that it's still bread. And you can have cinnamon bread. And you can also have a cinnamon roll. <laughs> if I'm making a sandwich. You're gonna make it with a cinnamon roll. That would be glorious. <laughs> I will make it with <coughs> wheat bread if those are the only two choices. But. I mean, um, I made a caveat on mine. I'd say sourdough, so. Yeah, I, I would probably go with wheat bread. That's what I would have every day, but. Um, silly comedy or dark comedy, silly. I don't silly really like comedies. dark comedy. Dark comedy get, can get into the okay. area where you're sitting next to the person that actually had that happen to them, right. and you're like, I want to laugh, but I don't want to laugh. I don't like that. But mm. silly comedy, normally silly that comedy. doesn't happen. For sure, silly comedy. Uh, it's not a Reuben without rye. That is no, correct. I rye do bread. like rye. Oh mm, boy. Yeah, I agree. And yes, a Reuben, you cannot have a Reuben without the rye. The dark bread uh, from Germany. Oh. Yes. Uh, I've known Sam since 2017 and met him in person 2019 at PAX. You still have the picture on my phone, uh, plus the pic from this. Plus the pic from this? Plus the pic. Plus. From PAX. From this past PAX. Right. Yeah, there you go. Real milk or something like almond milk? Ugh. I love milk, but I'm not drinking milk currently. I drink coconut milk. 
I usually go with 2% if I'm so drinking milk, milk, but I usually don't drink a lot of milk because... I used to drink a lot of milk. Same reasons, yeah. I used to drink, this would be my morning drink, and I would have about this much chai, and all the rest was milk. This is not a lie. No, this is not. She, this is not. She this drank, was chai. She drank chai-flavored milk. This was my milk. Yes. So I like dairy. I like milk, yeah. but I don't drink it currently. Uh, hey, Sam, if you... <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. If you call your old board games, do you think you will eventually replace them all with new games? Um, not on purpose. Right. Like I'm not going to call 50 games and now say, "Okay, yeah, I get now to go I buy have 50 to games. Yeah. buy 50 more games." That that. Um, but we do plan on if we reach the 10,000, maybe doing a call and giving those and away. giving as a giveaways. Yep. So. Get your uh, Vanessa, friends to like and subscribe. You are up on me. I have yet to meet Sam in person. Who was that? Kabuki. Mm. Uh, game with dice or without? I like both. Play a game with dice or without dice? I like, I don't I don't know that I have a preference. I like both because it kind of depends on the game. Yeah. Um, it depends on what you're rolling the dice for as well. Sometimes like, dice for combat resolution is is a little. Oh right, I can see that. It's a little dicey. <laughs> 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 no, it's it's a little it's a little awkward because. It can feel either really heavy-handed or really lucky, and you know, really bad luck or really good luck, and one way or the other. When it's not really, it's just statistics working itself out in in the microcosm of the game. So, um, but like for worker <coughs> placement <coughs> dice and stuff like that, yeah, I yeah. love it. Yeah. So I, I would probably say with dice. I, 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 I like would go the, both. The, I don't think I have. I I like. I don't. I don't think I have a preference. I like them both ways. What's I, your favorite party game? Mm, I like Telestrations because it makes everybody laugh. Mm. I like Just One because it starts conversations. Mm. Um, I don't love Cheese Thief. It gets loud. It gets annoying. It gets. Mm. I don't love the. What are they called? The social deduction games. I don't really love those. What? Because I'm terrible at bluffing, and I don't understand when people are bluffing, and I can't, like, I don't love those. So, um, Green Team Wins is fun, mm -hmm. but I would probably say Telestrations just because it creates the most laughter. But just one creates good conversations, so. Fried chicken or barbecue chicken? Um, I guess fried chicken. I would say barbecue chicken. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, and I, 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 I don't, don't mean really just chicken with barbecue sauce slathered on it. I mean, you cooked it in a pit, or a, a, a barbecue grill, mm. or on a black stone, or something like that. Um, I can do without fried foods at this point. I can do without them because they're just too. I don't really love barbecued wings. Like I don't <laughs> like wings at all. Oh, I like wings. Bone-in wings are the best. They're too messy. I get food everywhere. I end up with food like down my elbow, and like it's just it's not worth it. Uh, gonna be in any, uh, finger stuck in hair or stuck in a beard? <laughs> yeah, I've never gotten my finger stuck in his beard. I'll try harder. Uh -huh. Boy, uh -huh. I'm telling you, that was so stuck yesterday. It was. Uh, gonna be at any conventions this year? Uh, yes. Right now, I'm going to be at. Um, Gen Con later this year and PAX later this year, but right and Dice Tower East, those are the only three that I have uh, going on. I am going to be at the Dice Tower Retreat as well. Um, so those are the what was it three four four Gen Con Retreat isn't really a convention. Yeah. So the three conventions are going to be Dice Tower East, uh, Gen Con, and PAX, in that order. Uh, let's see here. Kabuki go to PAX. Sam will likely be there. That's probably true. Um, one versus many board games or team versus team? Uh, team versus team. Yeah. That's how normal, that's, that's normally how people vote. Right. Um, uh, one versus many, I don't know. But the good thing about one versus many is that the person who, who knows the game can play as the one. And then everybody else can play against them, right. and it kind of balances it out a little bit. So that's a cool thing. I do like one versus one versus all games, um, but I also like team versus team. It's fine. 
Um, are you rolling dice to determine results or allocating dice after the roll, e.g. Castles of Burgundy? Um, oh, well, yeah, that was a question to, to uh, game, game with dice or without. Uh, Derek, was that a question for Jesse? I think it was. Hair and hair, yeah. Uh, Pax, I was you would so be a, stuck yesterday. Would be the one I would be most likely to go to since I am in New Jersey. Do it, Kabuki. Um, I know people that just won't play games that have dice. Doesn't matter the use of the dice. Oh, interesting. Uh, those are the wrong people to play games with. <laughs> uh, yes, Grilled Chicken Sam. That's correct. And Camascon. Thank you, David. And well, Camus yeah, Cam Camascon is cool, but... Uh, it's not yeah. a convention so much. See, he did it again. He's poking the bear again. This week. This David. week. All capitals. Oi, David. Viking or Star Wars themed games? Uh, at this point, I'm more excited about Viking themed games. Because it seems like Star Wars games are just around battling. Fighting things out one side versus the other. That's, that's all Star Wars themed games are coming out with. Now, now Rebellion... Great game. Is it a battle game? Yes, but there's a whole lot of other things going on. Uh, Star Wars Outer Rim, a pick up and deliver game. Great game. Um, what are some other ones? Uh, but, I mean, anything else nowadays, it, it's either a card game, uh, it's a tabletop miniatures game, which is one side versus the other, or a card game, one player against another player. Um, or, and that's all they're coming out with now. So I'm more interested in Viking-themed games right now because it seems like that theme lends itself better to a wider variety of, of uh, design spaces, unfortunately. Digital streaming or physical media? I'm good either way. Digital streaming, I feel like we have more choices. Yeah, uh, and, and it's a lot easier to get a hold of too. So I would say digital streaming. Uh, WHL or NHL? Um, well, we like WHL because that's our league right yeah, now. Yeah, that's our league right now. If we had an NHL league in our city, we'd probably be NHL. Yeah. So NHL, NHL is great hockey, but it's also expensive. Mm -hmm. We would not be able to afford season tickets to an NHL right, team. Right, right. Uh, so that's just the long and the short of it. Um, we can barely afford it to the WHL team, so we have to make yeah. it a priority. Um <clears throat> dice or card games? I'm going to go with dice games. Uh, what about you? I like dice. I mean, they're fine either way, but mm -hmm. I don't mind. Um, Java's Palace is a version of Love Letter. No battling there. And it's also Love Letter. <laughs> uh, David Brownlee, yeah. Ordered NAR this morning. Very cool. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> uh, I like the engine building and combo-tastic chaining. That is correct. Very cool. I'm glad yeah. you enjoyed I, it. Dude. A lot of us in this family I, like that. I one. have to say, I have yet, I have yet to experience that not happening every time I teach a game of NAR. Right. Everyone goes. Oh, somebody, this is super fun. somebody lets me know. Yep, I just bought it. Yep. Yep, I just bought it. it happened to me, I think, through twice right. at Dice Tower right. East. Um, no, on no the I'm cruise. sorry, Dice Tower West. Oh. Uh, just happened now. Uh, every single time I teach that game, somebody says, "Yep, I just bought it." It's a great game. It's super fun. Uh, Dante loves that one, too. Mm -hmm. right, uh, how about going. a segment where you play a game from your self of shame? That's... Kind of what we're doing. We're, we're trying to... We're kind of trying to start doing that. Best sequel to a movie, Aliens or T2? Terminator 2. I'm going to say Aliens was better than T2. Um, uh, ba -ba -ba. Well, that's about it. we got to get going. It's 10 16. And we got a couple things to do here at the house before we head out. So thank you for joining us. We appreciate you being here. Um, uh, tomorrow, you're going to have the bottom five games from 2012. JT and I recorded that. We're going to, that's posting on the Dice Tower tomorrow at 4 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Pacific. We're going to do something a little bit different this year this week. I'm going to put the top five. It's going to go live at the same time tomorrow. One o'clock Pacific, four o'clock Eastern. So you can watch one and then immediately go watch the other. 
I'm gonna, this is a test. I know, I remember somebody suggested that. This is a that. test of the emergency broadcast system. True. Uh, this is only a test. So we'll see how it goes. And if we get a greater Viewer. number of views on the sure. top five, then because it was released at the same time and people will be able to watch one and then immediately go watch the other, we might keep doing it the same way. Um, but we'll see, we'll see. But so both of them are gonna be available tomorrow at 1 p.m. Pacific time. Anyway, we're gonna get out of here. But Sam is wrong about love letter. Fine, David. It's okay. I'm okay with being wrong. <laughs> I'm okay. Um, all right, we're out. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care. Bye.